in search of its first 6 and 0 start since 1962 despite starting 5 and 0 three of the last five years. Meanwhile Penn State is surging winners at three straight after an 0 and 2 start. The Nittany Lions won the toss and will receive Steve Flaherty will kick off for the Wildcats looking for credibility as a Big Ten championship contender. Della Valley and Kenny are the deep men for Penn State. Big Ten home opener short kickoff. And here's Kenny on the 20 out near the 30 yard line. And that's where Matt McGloin of the Penn State offense will operate. McGloin leading the Big Ten in passing. And could you say, Brian, one of the more improved players in the country this year? Absolutely. He's benefited the most on this Penn State team from Bill O'Brien and his offense. Last week took a little bit of a step back with his accuracy. A lot of low balls in that game against Illinois. He's going to have to be more efficient today against a better Northwestern team. His best games in his career have come against Northwestern. And off play action, looking to dump it off to his tight end, Gary Gilliam. And out near the 46 yard line, they will use the tight ends in many different ways. And Gilliam, not known as a pass catcher, picks up 16. Yeah, if they can establish a running game with Belton and Zwinak, all of a sudden the play action game will have more sting. Gilliam, not known for his pass catching abilities, he's the Y tight end in this offense for Bill O'Brien. Mostly known as a blocker, but a good catch there. The two positions, the Y and the F tight end. We'll talk more about that as we go along. First down for Penn State on its 45. Here's Bill Belton. And a big haul for Belton. Trying to get the corner, but he's chased down after a game of close to 10. And then a penalty flag comes in as Quinn Evans hit Belton late. Belton ran into a table on the Northwestern bench. So tack on 15, that'll place the ball near the 30-yard line of Northwestern. It's just not necessary. Early in the game, it's emotional. You want to come out, and defensively, you want to make a play, establish yourself, and just not, uh, not a smart play there by Evans. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, Pat Fitzgerald told us that he was concerned about his team being too hyped. Yeah. We saw them overrun a play to the right, and then the cutback there and then the late hit that followed. It's a big game for Northwestern. Pat Fitzgerald senses the opportunity this year with what's going on in the Big Ten. They're a fast start, but you got to manage your emotions early in games. Here's McGloin on first and 18. The screen to Zwinnick. And he's inside the 35. Eight of about 14. Brought down by Quentin Williams. Penn State, of course, is not eligible for the Big Ten Championship. Four year probation, as you know, for uh, the Nittany Lions. In the leaders' division, it's down to Purdue, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's why I said that's sure. stopped at Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> Purdue and Wisconsin. And, and who knows? In, in the Legends division, is Northwestern. Uh, one of the teams to beat. A swing pass that's dropped by Robinson. So third down and seven. Robinson, 32 catches, number two in the Big Ten, but he could not hang on here. Yeah, and this is just a run pass option for Matt McGloin. If the corner's off of Robinson, he can just flip it out there. If the corner's up hard pressed, then they run the football. And Robinson, normally sure handed, uh, just that's uncharacteristic of him. So let's see how they handle this again if they go. Towards the first down marker or just try to get three or four yards. Yeah Because you know they're not kicking a field goal from here third and seven no hand it off So when at trying to get away from an ankle tackle he can't short of the first down and Penn State faced with a fourth and four will likely go for it Quentin Williams made another tackle for Northwestern So he treated that like it was second down absolutely and you get in these situations fourth down and four and I know Bill O'Brien coming from the National Football League. In the National Football you, you use your cadence a lot more than you do in college. In this situation, they love to go to tight ends. Here's the tight end in the slot. McLaurin instead throws a screen, and Robinson has the first down inside the 20-yard line. Tackled at the 19. Gain of 12. Ibrahim Campbell on the stop. 33rd catch of the year for Allen Robinson. Great execution. The block by Felder first, and then Farrell, the tackle, comes outside. They had three offensive linemen that got out on the perimeter. The center, right guard, and right tackle, all with blocks that 
Net a first down for Penn State. So here they got the tight end flexed all the way to the top of your screen. Kyle Carter, McGloin loves to throw it to him in the red zone. It'll be a run play instead. Zwinak met at the point of the tag and driven down. He got positive yardage to about the four for a pickup of three. Pro be in there again for the Wildcats on defense. And I think if they're going to get better in red zone efficiency and scoring touchdowns, as we say so many weeks out of the season, you got to be able to run the ball down here. And Zwinak is really the guy that's got to step up and, and make those plays. Already 13 plays run in Northwestern territory for Penn State. And he lines with a second down and goal. So when Axe stays in the game, led the team in rushing each of the last two weeks. Here's Winnack off the right side. Stumbles to the three-yard line. They're actually going to say that first contact with the ground happened at the four. That's where the ball was when Zwinak was tripped up by Tyler Scott. So third down and goal from the same spot as second down. <laughs> well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they might be in field goal range here if they don't make a touchdown. But I don't know. But in this situation, Bill O'Brien loves play action pass. So keep an eye out for those tight ends. Carter's in a wing slot right now. There he goes in motion. Third and goal, play action. McGloin dropped by Carter. It would have been a touchdown. He was open. Proby was in the area, the middle linebacker. Carter couldn't hang on to it. It's fourth down, and they will bring on the field goal team. Well, he had a dealer's choice. Zordich went in the flat. He was open, could have caught a touchdown, and then just took his eyes off the ball. Kyle Carter, you've got to know where you are in the field. No reason to turn your head. You catch that ball, fall backwards, it's a touchdown. You don't need to see anything else. Keep your eyes on the football. So here we go. This could be an adventure. Sam Ficken with a 21-yard field goal try. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> 90,000 plus with a standing ovation for Sam Ficken. 12 play, 33 yard scoring drive. They had the short field. And they finally get points. Even <laughs> O'Brien is concerned about a 21 yard field goal. He's happy now, though, and so is Sam Ficken. Pep rally last night here at State College homecoming for Penn State and his Big Ten home opener. They've won three in a row and they've got a three nothing lead after a 21 yard field goal by Sam Ficken. They have not given up a point in the first quarter and they've scored now 52. In fact in the first half they're outscoring team 79 to 9. They've not allowed a first half touchdown. It's Benrick Mark an excellent return man. Able to get outside, but ran out of bounds around the 20. Last week, Northwestern put up a school record 704 yards of total offense. And the two guys responsible play the same position. Quarterback Kane Coulter and Trevor Simeon. Coulter was lined up all over the place. Had four rushing touchdowns, nine receptions, as Trevor Simeon is in the game. A quarterback now for Northwestern. He throws it out in the flat to Venrick Mark. And he's dragged down by Sean Stanley after a gain of two yards. So you got a defensive end out there chasing down the running back. All right, here we go. Strap up your chin straps at home. This offense is getting ready to go fast. Simeon last week threw for over 300 yards. Now run the ball. Then Rick Mark, who's 5'8", 180 pounds. At a career high 139 rushing yards a week ago against Indiana. So Simeon now faced with a third down and three. And this is where he loves to go to the other quarterback, Kane Coulter. He's in the ball game, as you see now. He's down here at the bottom of the screen. He had six catches last week for third down conversions. And nine catches overall. Had almost 300 yards total offense, Coulter did. Simeon, that pass deflected, incomplete. Jordan Hill, outstanding defensive tackle who gave Northwestern fits last year, comes up with a play. 
He was trying to get the ball to Coulter, and they just ran a stunt up front. Looked like Deion Barnes, the left defensive end, got his hand on that football. Barnes has been making more and more plays in this defense for Ted Ruth. We're really excited about the potential of the young freshman. It was Barnes, but also Hill got the push into the quarterback, and now the punt from uh, Brandon Williams. And it's going to be fair caught by Evan Lewis, just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, Penn State's defense off to a good start, holding Northwestern to 12 yards. Back to throw McGloin, wide open is the F, Kyle Carter, inside the 45-yard line. Out of bounds at the 43, pushed out by Damian Proby. And why it's difficult is you got to be able to find these guys in the formation. That time, lack of recognition by Northwestern. Araguza was responsible for this guy in the flat, either he or the corner, and when you have a lot of different formations and a lot of different personnel groupings with players that can do a lot of different versatile things, it's hard to match up. A lot of Zordich here at tailback and go with two tight ends. Play action. McGloin in trouble. And McGloin almost throws an interception trying to throw it away. Chance Carter, a defensive lineman, was covering the running back, Michael Zordich. And also you had Chichi Araguza in the face of Matt McGloin in the backfield. They wanted to take a shot down the field. A lot of times when coordinators on the offensive side cross the 50-yard line, they say, you know what, let's take a shot to the end zone. Hard play action. There was an open over the top. And then they covered the outlet Zordich in the flat. And he was just trying to dump it at his feet. Play action again. McGloin looking downfield again, but it's covered. McGloin spins in the backfield and dumps it off to Jesse James, and he got lit up by Wabusi. Big hit. And no gain on the play, so third down and 10. This Northwestern defense has played well so far. I mean, they've uh, given up only three points that last drive, 11 plays, but they, they hold and stiffen inside the red zone. And, and now, again, bringing up a third and long situation. I've been impressed so far with the way that this defense and Mike Hankwitz has, has called this game. They don't have to snap it. We'll see if they do before the end of the quarter. Five seconds remaining. And they won't. So a quick quarter time of possession favoring Penn State 11 and a half minutes to three and three nothing that the lines on the scoreboard. Now as we look at the Big Ten standings Northwestern is really the only team to have success out of conference against other BCS schools but those teams they beat aren't doing well so it's really hard to gauge where Northwestern is Ohio State with a big win last week against Michigan State and they've got Nebraska tonight on ABC but you've got schools like Purdue I know Herbie has picked Purdue to win the Big Ten. <laughs> Michigan, huh? you know, they struggled early it's, on. It's so early. Well, this is only the second Big Ten uh, week uh, of the season for, for conference play. It's early. Third and ten, McGloin, and the pass batted down, incomplete. Fourth down and ten, we talked about, you know, Penn State sometimes running a third down play as if it's second down, but not on that. Uh, position of the field they'll punt here and try to pin Northwestern deep again yeah as I look at it I think Bill O'Brien in his head says if we get across the 35 yard line that's where I would would go for it on fourth down or treat third down like second down but outside of that I'm on punt Ben Mark after the short kick has the football at the 15 yard line. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Jen Brown, a record for total offense for Northwestern last week. They barely had the ball today, 15 yards on nine plays. Yeah, it's really been because of first and second down, they haven't been able to get any kind of yardage, and they've been in third longs, and they can't block this defensive front in third long situations. Trevor Simeon in a quarterback will throw from his end zone. In trouble. Flush out of the pocket and will head for the sideline and get about two yards to the 10 yard line. Simeon is a sophomore, Coulter is a junior. Simeon had a, a big game winning touchdown pass against Syracuse late, and they're going to shuffle it up here. Simeon. Put Simeon at wide receiver. Yeah, he stayed in the formation now at wide receiver, so keep an eye out. He's down here at the bottom of the screen. And 
Coulter trying to get the exchange. Gets tackled by Olanian and Benrick Mark. And Coulter, and the quarterback, was deciding whether to give or keep, but Olanian blew the play up. Yeah, played very well by Olanian. You see, they brought Hodges on the outside, and Hodges' responsibility is Kane Coulter. He has the quarterback 100%, and that freed up Olanian to take the dive. Now Simeon at quarterback for third and nine. Four-man rush. Simeon's pass incomplete. Gerald Hodges tipped it. And it's fourth down. It was intended. Great play by Gerald Hodges here. He's the one that's supposed to reroute the receiver. You got to get a push on him so he can't get downfield. That was Coulter, too. They were trying to get it to, and he Great fell down. Job. Yes, absolutely, but that's a nice play by Gerald Hodges, knowing that as a linebacker, I probably can't run with Coulter, but I sure can be physical with him, not let him get downfield. Hunting from the end zone. Short kick, it is windy and fielded by Evan Lewis. Knocked down at the 40 yard line. Araguzo with the special teams tackle. First down from the 40. Bill O'Brien told us how much he loves empty. And here it is on first and 10. McGloin surveying, gets hit, but delivers it to Mosby Felder. Breaks a tackle inside the 30 yard line and steps out at the 35. That's a 15 yard gain, pushed out by Quinn Evans. The pocket collapses on Matt McGloin. Great job of keeping his composure, knowing where all his receivers are, and then making a throw under duress. Seventh first down for Penn State. 27 plays run by the Indy Lions. Here's number 28. McGloin, dangerous throw, but it's caught by Mosby Felder at the 23 for a couple of yards. He was tackled immediately. Nick Van Hoos on the coverage. We've seen uh, Northwestern use the hurry up offense and now Bill O'Brien starting to use his hurry up. He calls it NASCAR. Swinak off the left side. Oh, he got tripped up in the hole. Otherwise, he might still be running. Brought down by David Wabusi at the 17-yard line after a gain of seven. And I think it was interesting to listen to Bill O'Brien that he was going to use the NASCAR sparingly because he didn't want to go really quick, go three and out, and keep his defense on the field against an explosive Northwestern team. But he's done it so far. A pass here on third down and one. And it's deflected by the linebacker, Eric Guzzo on an underthrown ball. He had some problems with that last week. Didn't have enough on that pass. It was intended for Robinson. Well, they were gonna try to get play action to suck up Araguso, but he played it well, reacted, and then was able to use his athletic ability to get a hand on the football. That's not an easy play to make as a linebacker because they had hard power run fake that he has to respect and then react to the play action pass. Would that, would that pass have even made it there though? I mean, he was five yards in front of it when he knocked it down. Hard to tell. Fourth down and one, and they're going for it for the third time. Quarterback sneak, and McGloin picks it up to the 14-yard line. Would have been a 32-yard field goal, but they're going for it in the red zone. Three for three on fourth down. Saw a little bit of a lane there. It looked like the, the nose guard went one way and the defensive tackle the other, and there was a natural seam for Matt McGloin. Short yards, you have to expect sneak. Here's Winnick trying to pick a hole. Able to keep the feet moving, but stacked up after a gain of one to the 13-yard line. Ibrahim Campbell in there, the strong safety for Northwestern to make the stop. We're talking with Bill O'Brien, and he said, you know, I got four backs now that are healthy that can run. Last week, I just kept seeing Zwinak slam it in there consistently against Illinois, so that's why he's got the start. Here he is again, and he's inside the 10. Broken tackle, and Zwinak to the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Penn State. Ninth carry of this first half for Zach Zwinak. It's an inside trap, well blocked by the offensive line. Farrell gets on the linebacker, and Zwinak has a nice hole to run in, and this Northwestern defense, which has been good against the run, starting to crack a little bit. 
He'll give it to Zwinnow. Diving for the touchdown. Last week against Illinois, they had four one-yard rushing touchdowns. They get their first score here from one yard out on the ground with Zach Zwinnak, his third touchdown of the year. Ficken nails it. And Penn State with a 10 0 lead on Northwestern. Good blocking up front by the center, Stan Kavich, and Zwinak dies for six. Homecoming weekend in State College, a surging Penn State team has won three straight games and off to a good start today against Northwestern. Leading 10 0 early second quarter. They are winning all the battles, field position time of possession and they've run 22 more plays than the Wildcats who rely on that high paced offense usually they get about 80 plays a game Mark takes a knee and Northwestern will start at the 25 that's good first down to the 25 yard line of Northwestern Simeon and it's caught at the 31 yard line by Christian Jones. So if you're Pat Fitzgerald, how do you handle this quarterback situation right now? You know, they, I, I would play Kane Coulter at quarterback just right now so I get some rhythm because this Penn State defense is good at rushing the pass or not as good sideline to sideline. Run play mark, and they're able to push the pile to get the first down. They've got right now Simeon at quarterback and Coulter at receiver. Yeah, and, but most importantly, they, they needed to get that first first down because now they can ramp up in, in their pace. But when they have Coulter at quarterback, there's much more threat of the horizontal game, which the speed of this Penn State defense, I don't think, can keep up with. That was their first first down. Ball at the 35-yard line. Simeon and had a man wide open and able to make the catch before stepping out as Christian Jones. That's his 17th catch of the year. Got a handful on that play. Well, and, and this settles down the young quarterback. Nice catch. Inbounds, well done, but settle down your young quarterback with a couple completions. Simeon to throw on second and five. Passes high and incomplete. It was intended for Coulter. It'll be third down and five. This is the one thing that concerns me about what I saw last week from Trevor Simeon. Some, some of his balls come out high. This ball is high to Coulter. You don't want to lay out your receivers like that, number one. But number two, when you throw the ball high, you bring the tip into the equation, and that's never good for the offense. You can turn it over very easily. And so Simeon changing things up, getting the check from the sideline. Play clock at four. Down to one. They bring the back into the backfield to help block. And now going deep is Simeon. Single coverage and thrown out of bounds. Intended for Lawrence. Stephon Morris had nice coverage running with the wide receiver. It's fourth and five. We'll see if Northwestern punts or goes for it. Yeah, this is one thing that Ted Roof was concerned about. If we're going to blitz, how are my guys going to cover on the outside man to man coverage? And that time Morris did so uh, very well. Again, they're expecting about 20 mile an hour winds and you know, the flags are moving here and, and maybe that's a factor. It looks like it's been in the kicking game so far as that punt was almost blocked. And again, that hung in the air and it's mopped. It's recovered by Northwestern. It's dead though. You can't advance a mop. It'll be Northwestern ball inside the 17 yard line recovered by Nick Van Hoos. It looked like the ball hung in the air and it was misjudged by Jesse Della Valley. Well, the wind is blowing from his back and I think he just, you're right, he misjudged that. He didn't need to take his eye off the ball because he had signaled for the fair catch. I think maybe there was a gust of wind and a big change in momentum and an opportunity now for Northwestern to get back in this game. So just as we're talking about the win, you see it playing a role. And now the Wildcats with an opportunity to get points down 10 nothing midway through the half. Kane Coulter is in the game at quarterback here as they're in the red zone. And Coulter will keep 
Inside the 15, Coulter to the 10, and down at the four-yard line. Gerald Hodges tracks him down. That was beautiful, 13 <laughs> yards. This is why I would have this guy at quarterback. They have two guys assigned to him, and he just splits up. Hodges can't keep up with him. Stanley didn't know where to take the dive or the quarterback. When you put Kane Coulter in that position, good things happen for Northwestern. He had the dive. There was also the pitch there, too, because he had Absolutely. the other guy in the backfield. Absolutely. It's a traditional veer option is all it is. First and goal from the four. Coulter. Mark straight ahead down to the two yard line before he swarmed Anthony Zettel in there for Penn State now, this is tough for Mark he's about 150 pounds going in there against 300 pound yeah. defensive lineman between the tackle well, I'm surprised they give Mark that that ball on a power run like that that's normally Trumpy's job in this offense especially down here inside the five yard line well, but two guys back there again with Colts and no receivers and here's the pitch as Coulter gets it to Mark, who's in. Touchdown, Northwestern. And boy, Coulter got nailed just as he released the pitch. And Mark takes it in for his sixth rushing touchdown. Well, it's a speed option this time. They get a great block from the fullback on the outside. Hodges does his job. He's got the full, the quarterback, and Carson, the middle linebacker, just not enough speed to keep up with Venrick Martin. So Northwestern takes advantage of the turnover, the muffed punt. We saw Penn State muff a punt week one when they had Gerald Hodges back there. And that changed momentum in that game. Ohio went on to win it. And it certainly changed momentum here as Northwestern, which couldn't do anything on offense, gets a break, starts in the red zone after this mistake. And then the Wildcats run it in. Mark with a touchdown, 10-7 Penn State. Flaherty with a short kickoff again, the wind a factor. Della Valley on the return, out to the 30-yard line. Oh, he got drill but hung on to the ball here it's 10 7 Penn State play action for McGloin airing it out and in the double coverage it's broken up it was intended for Mosby Felder Campbell was down there for Northwestern yeah this was a greedy throw from Matt McGloin you had a single safety defense and you never throw the post against a single safety April Campbell was in perfect position that ball only goes downfield in Bill O'Brien's offense against the two safety look, the quarters look when they react on the run fake. So it's a misread by Matt McGloin. But a good enough throw could have been caught. That's a tough, that's a tough ball to catch when the safety's in center field and is able to play. Zwinak on second and ten. And he powers to the 35-yard line. That's one of their better run plays today. Five yards. So third and five coming up. I'm surprised, quite frankly, we haven't seen a little bit more of Bill Belton. You know, he's he's really the guy that brings the speed and shiftiness from the halfback position. I understand Zwinak had a great game the last two weeks, over 100 yards, but they need a little bit of an element of speed, I think, to go along with the power of Zwinak. Penn State, last home win against a ranked team was 2008. That was also the last year Northwestern was ranked. Wildcats trying to go 6-0 and for the first time in 50 years. They're down three. As McGloin on third down throws high intended for Carter and that was into triple coverage. So Northwestern's defense bounces back with a three and out forcing a punt. Yeah, just trying to get Carter on a shallow cross and he couldn't get through traffic. That was the issue there. That, that's where the ball should go in man to man coverage. But he couldn't get through the traffic. And now all of a sudden the momentum Northwestern gets a turnover touchdown and a three and out. And you sense the change of momentum in this game in the first half. And the wind playing more of a role, and you see it right there, yep. And it's really picking up. You can see the debris on the field, and you could also see the ball kind of flutter off the foot. Well, that was a shank. <laughs> that was in the wind. That well, was a wind helped it, though, on the shank. <laughs> made it worse. <laughs> Trevor Simeon at quarterback for Northwestern. He's got a strong arm. The pass was there. Malcolm Willis came over late and may have gotten a hand on it. It was intended for Tony Jones. Malcolm Willis had the coverage for the Boy, that ball was thrown no, well. just dropped. Yeah, it's got to be caught. Again, with that wind picking up. Not an easy throw. Simeon to the air again. Oh, it gets crunched but delivers it. And then Gerald Hodges rips down the receiver at the 38-yard line. It was caught by Christian Jones, but he paid for it. Gain of 
four yards, and they go quickly to the line for third and six. Simeon. Deep pass. Broken up, but a flat. Stephon Moore has tipped it, but a penalty marker in. Stephon Morris was in front of a receiver. Defense number 12. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Let's see, did he have his off hand on the receiver when he tipped the ball? You see his left hand there, but that's a bad call. Well, I, I don't know if that was the call, though, Dave. It may have been before that, but uh, certainly from that view, he wasn't even touching the receiver. Bad call. First down on the 47 of Penn State. Simeon, time to throw, open in the middle of the field is Trumpy. He's loose inside the 35. Finally downed after a 16-yard gain at the 31 by Glenn Carson. Simeon on second down. Dumps it off to Trumpy. And he is hit at the 25, thrown down by Mike Hall at the 24. Clock running. We near one minute to go. Northwestern can take its time if it wants. Two timeouts remaining. And they have a good field goal kicker. Unlike Penn State, their kicker is 11 of 11 on the year and has a strong leg. Simeon on second and short. Good throw for a first down inside the 15 to Demetrius Fields. I really like what Trevor Simeon has done on this drive. He's shown patience, not forcing the ball downfield, taking checkdowns to Trumpy, throwing the short routes on the slant, just keeping this offense moving in this two-minute situation. Clock at 45 and counting. Pressure coming. Simeon's pass. Incomplete, intended for Fields at the five. So the clock stopped with 40 seconds left and two timeouts. I think right here they've thrown the ball exclusively on this drive. There's plays, there's lanes in the middle of this defense right now for them to run the football. They've got two timeouts. The clock should be no issue right now. It's all about how can we get yardage. Well, Coulter's in the game. He's in the slot. And Simeon stays in the game at quarterback. There's Coulter there, number two. Check again coming from the Northwestern sideline, but they got a hustle. Play clock at three. Simeon going end zone. Almost picked off after the redirection intended for Kane Coulter. And Malcolm Willis, the safety, was behind him. Both had a chance at the football. Yeah, another high throw. He had Coulter there if that ball was just a little bit lower. Coulter could have made that play, but the third ball, and I've seen Trevor Simeon throw high. Simeon at quarterback, Northwestern, one of seven on third down. They have to get to the one. Simeon, end zone, caught! Touchdown, Northwestern! Tony Jones with the grab, and what a throw by Coulter. A lot of traffic in the end zone, and he put it on him. They've thrown that pass two times in this drive to the back, Trumpy, over the ball and let him get yards. That time, the same route, Simeon lets him bite up on the halfback and goes over the top. So the muff punt completely shifts momentum. 14 straight points by Northwestern after the Bud Zine extra point. And Northwestern will start the second half on offense. Pat Fitzgerald standing by with Jim. Thanks, Dave. Coach, we saw you fired up over here on the sidelines. Obviously, a momentum swing in your favor. How do you keep yeah. that going? Well, Jen, you know, we thought we had to weather the first quarter storm. We didn't make it that, need to make it that hard on us. Only six plays. Give a lot of credit to Penn State. They did a great job, but we settled down. Hopefully, we'll keep the momentum going. Big, big drive here to start the third quarter. We felt the wind picked up down here. How are you guys going to deal with that? Hopefully, well. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely a factor. Now the sun comes out, it'll probably slow down a little bit. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Dave? 
Well, Pat's voice was perfect yesterday in our meeting, so he lost it here in 30 minutes of game time. 14 10 is team on front, trying to stay unbeat. Here's Reese, Mark, and Lou, the Lexus halftime report. Northwestern seeking bowl eligibility, and it's first 6 0 start in 50 years, leading Penn State 14 10. But it looked early like Penn State was going to roll, Brian. Northwestern yeah. had just 12 yards in the first quarter. But then after a muff punt, they took advantage of that, and the Wildcat, Wildcat offense got going in that second quarter. Well, it did, specifically that last drive in the two minutes to get that touchdown to go ahead, and Trevor Simeon finally started to settle in a little bit. Penn State started 0-2, but has won three in a row, playing really well on offense, despite 46 plays and 20 minutes time of possession. Only 10 points. And Northwestern will start with a ball. Ficken kicking it. Hey, he's missed six from like 25 <laughs> yards, but he puts it through the uprights from 75. <laughs> but it will come out to the 25, so. Hey, anytime the ball goes through the uprights for him, he's happy. <laughs> it's not going to help his conversation with, uh, with the coach saying, hey, you can't make it from 35, you can't from 75. Big hole down the middle of the defense as Benrick Mark, again between the tackles, having success. A gain of 11 for Mark, who is averaging over 100 yards on the ground per game, a, a former wide receiver. They need to get Venrick Mark going in this game. He can, obviously, you know he can catch the ball out of the backfield as a former wideout, but he is really impressed in the running game between the tackles. Pressure coming, Simeon hit. And Simeon sacked at the 31 by Jordan Hill. That's exactly what we were talking about, bringing more pressure from Ted Roof. They bring the linebacker off one side, and that leaves a single for Jordan Hill. And anytime he's singled up, especially against a young offensive right guard in Dieters, he is going to be a handle. And he's fresh. You know, he only was on the field for 10 minutes in yeah. that first half, and he's a guy that plays all three downs for them, maybe their best defensive player. Coulter is in a quarterback for second and 15. And it's Mark straight ahead. And Gerald Hodges nails him as he got back to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll bring up third down and long. We'll see if they keep Coulter in at QB or go with Simeon here on a passing down. I get the sense that the conversation in the Penn State locker room at halftime with Ted Roof and this defense and the leaders, Hodges, Hill, I think this, this this unit is going to come out in the second half inspired and start to attack and come after this Northwestern offense. It is Simeon at quarterback for third and ten. Simeon with Tom on a drag route. It's caught. Short of the first down is Tony Jones. Good open field tackle by Malcolm Willis to force a punt. From Northwestern. Well, it was a great call and protection by the offensive line. They brought the blitz on the weak side. You're going to see it come from this side, and this offensive line turns that way. And, and then you have the rotation of the safeties. You force a throw underneath, and now the key is make the tackle. And Malcolm Willis was up to the task. Della Valley has to back up. Going to let this one go. And down to the 20 yard line. So first down on the 32. McGloin setting up the screen to Zwinak. And Zwinak makes a nice move in the backfield to elude a tackler and get to the 38 for six yards. Chichi Araguza, the leading tackler for Northwestern, made the stop. They go with three wide here. Second and four. Zwinak again. And he's able to break a tackle, keep the feet moving, and get the first down. Tyler Scott, the hit, but a nice power run by Zach Zwinnick. Yeah, the linebacker had a free run at him here. Watch, he just bounces off. Then another guy, defensive tackle, bounces off. He's not going to go down with arm tackles or one guy. It's that determination and effort that's really separated him from the other backs on this team. 53 yards on 14 carries for Zwinnick and a one-yard touchdown run. Here he is again on a draw play. 
into Wildcat territory, bounces off two more defenders and takes it to the 43-yard line, 15-yard pickup. Well, it's the Zach Zwinak drive here. Watch the, watch the vision and patience. He waits for the, the defensive tackle to cross his face, and then he lets for the kick out, and a nice hole opens up. But if he were too fast into that hole, that defensive end that was crashing could have made that play. Or on the 43-yard line. Swinak again. He's touched it on every play of this drive, either rushing or receiving. Tyler Scott with a tackle at the 39, a four-yard game. Well, Bill O'Brien told us yesterday that in that game against Illinois, he didn't know which one of his four backs he was going to play the most, and he just wanted to wait to see who got the hot hand. You hear that sometimes from coaches. Who's going to have the hot hand? I'll stick with him. And when he just saw the power with which Swinak was running downhill, he said, that's my guy. And right now, I would be surprised surprised if he did anything other than turn a hand into him on this drive. Although you'd have to think play action's coming at some point. 11th play of the drive coming up. McGloin going to go to the end zone. Single coverage with Robinson. There was contact and a flag comes down. Quinn Evans trying to defend the best receiver for Penn State, Allen Robinson. Pass interference. Defense number 31. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. I'll put the ball inside the 10. Take a look. Robinson will be, he doesn't give himself any room to catch this ball. And Evans didn't need to push him out of bounds. Doesn't get his head turned around. You don't see the football. You're going to get in trouble. And Quinn Evans, who Pat Fitzgerald's really excited about him, a transfer. He was at Stanford for four years and graduated. Uh, he had a medical uh, issue and hardship, and now he's on this squad for Northwestern, but uh, not a smart play. Zordich is the back. Two tight ends on first down and goal. Here's Zordich, and he bounces off the initial hitter and then brought down by Eric Guza and maybe a yard there. A second down and goal coming up. Zordich, whose father played here, now an assistant coach with the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of players on this Penn State team whose fathers or uncles played here and very proud trying to carry on the tradition that obviously was scarred from the Sandusky situation. By the way, Sandusky will face sentencing on Tuesday. Obviously, that'll be a big story nationally, especially here at State College. Play clock at three. McGloin in the gun. McGloin waiting. Robinson comes open. It's a touchdown. He got away from Quinn Evans, and Penn State is back on top. Receiving touchdown for Allen Robinson, leading the Big Ten. McGloin now with 11 touchdown passes and only two interceptions. And now Ficken, with all kinds of confidence after putting it through the uprights on the kickoff, blasts the extra point. Allen Robinson has burst onto the scene in the Big Ten this year. Tremendous talent, great route here. Penn State answers Northwestern. Well, Ficken, he had it going. The last one went through the uprights. This one almost out of bounds. Fielded by Hanrahan. Out near the 30-yard line. And Trevor Simeon. And a quarterback for Northwestern, which trails now. 17-14. Here's a wide receiver screen to Tony Jones. Crosses the 30 to the 32. So a three-yard pickup. And Michael Maudie, who is the defensive player of the week in the Big Ten and the national defensive player of the week, makes the stop. Up tempo as usual for Northwestern. They snap it quickly. Simeon running the option. Here's Mark, and Mark is loose all the way to the 47 yard line. He got drilled, but he hung on to the ball. Stephon Morris with the tackle. 14 yard gain. Fenrick Marks, one of those players that's a threat to go the distance on any snap. Anytime he touches that ball, and Penn State cannot afford to let him get any kind of crease. Simeon throws it to Demetrius Fields who gets about four yards to midfield. 
See early in this drive for Northwestern, the ball on the perimeter. They've run the ball quite a bit on the inside of this defense throughout three quarters, but now concerted effort to get on the edge. Second down and long. Simeon in the traffic. Caught first down at the 40-yard line. Kane Coulter, who is the quarterback, and then last week had nine receptions wow. in the win over Indiana with a nice catch that time for a first down. He's an impressive kid, but an even better player. I mean, he's just tough, runs good routes. Coaches think he could be a receiver at the next level. He's explosive. Oh, drop inside the 30-yard line as Christian Jones was open. You can tell going back to Simeon late second quarter, he's got it going now. That pass he threw, there was a touchdown in today's streak of 14 consecutive rushing touchdowns. They hadn't had a passing touchdown since the first game. Yeah. A lot of that had to do with the fact that Kane Coulter was playing quarterback. And now it's very interesting. This offense has shifted from a running offense to a passing offense. Here's Mark finding a crease, and Mark has a first down to the 29. I'm a little bit confused as to why Penn State is not ganging up on Venrick Mark. You can't tackle him in space with one guy. You don't have to worry about Trevor Simeon keeping the ball in the running game. You need to get two guys on Venrick Mark. Mark 61 yards rushing and a touchdown. First down from inside the 30. Here's Mark again. And it's a good run. Four yards to the 25-yard line. So we near the five-minute mark in the third quarter, and Penn State on top. I watched Mike Maudy on that last play, and just one shuffle step to the quarterback opened up the lane and got four yards for Mark. Simeon steps up, runs. Middle of the field is open. He's at the 15. Dies for the first down, and he's going to come up just short. Tripped up by Obing Ajapong, but good recognition by Simeon to take off and get almost 15 yards. Yeah, he's not known for, for his mobility, but when, ha when he's given the chance, he can certainly make you pay with his feet. Third down and a yard. Coulter and Trumpy in the backfield. Coulter keeps. Coulter scores. Touchdown, Northwestern. 18th career rushing touchdown and seventh this season for Kane Coulter. And Northwestern retakes the lead late in the third. He's the X factor in the red zone, and that's why they've had so much success getting in the end zone, running the football, is because you don't know whether to tackle Venrick Mark or stay outside for Kane Coulter, and that's a killer inside the 10-yard line. Bud Zine has never missed an extra point in his career. Now 72 of 72. What an answer for Northwestern. Penn State gets a touchdown. They go right down the field on the perimeter this time, and Kane Coulter finishes it off. Adrian Amos and Jesse Della Valley will be the deep men. Not as windy as it was in the first half. Short kick, Amos from the three. And Amos lost the ball but fumbled it out of bounds, so it'll be Penn State ball around the 25. Great time of year, huh? Reese, you got playoff baseball, conference play in college football, NFL action as uh, McGloin dumps it off to Zordich. He makes the man miss and appears to have a first down. Proby on the stop. Good job by Zordich out in space. Go back and take a look at the touchdowns. The threat of Kane Coulter puts pressure on defensive ends. Watch C.J. Olani on here. He's going to have to read the quarterback. And Coulter's reading Olani on. He pulls it late, and this is where, you know, Kane Coulter can break ankles. You can't be right in that situation. And olani has got to break down in that situation and take the quarterback because he's the one that's the most threatened. First down Penn State on its 34. Here's Zordich who is lined up at tailback, and he's driven to the ground. 
A gain of maybe one. Let's check in with Jen Brown on the field. Well, right after that touchdown when Penn State came off the field, defensive line coach Larry Johnson went right up to C.J. Olani on and said, that was your play. You've got the quarterback. You missed that. They've been sitting over here. Obviously, C.J. not uh, not feeling too good about what he did. Gerald Hodges went up to him and said, C.J., we're all tired. you got to get in this. Well, Pat Fitzgerald told us yesterday he wants to see a lot of those number twos out yep. there for Penn State. Olani is a number two, although he's in the rotation, gets a lot of plays. He's not a starter. McGloin off play action and a penalty flag down McGloin in trouble sacked at the 19 yard line trying to set up play action to go deep to Robinson sacked by McKevely but there's a holding call so let's see what they do if they decline the penalty or accept it offense number 76 the penalties decline brings up third down yeah Donovan Smith just got out of out of position here and got beat badly at the left tackle position just on a rush up up the field and then yanked on the jersey of Deontay Gibson. Now we talked about Pat Fitzgerald wanting to see the twos of Penn State on defense. Uh, conversely, the twos for Northwestern, he, he feels are pretty good. They're young, Deontay Gibson, Dean Lowry, yep. Redshirt, and true freshman respectively. And they've made some plays this year, and that was Gibson. Third and 24 for Penn State. And it's a screen to Zordich. And he's out past the 20. Wrestled down at the 21. Gain of only a yard at Penn State will punt. Good stop by this Northwestern defense. On the last drive, they looked susceptible to the running game and the power game of Zwinak. That time came out, made some adjustments, and Pat Fitzgerald gets a stop for his defense. Alex Butterworth will boot it away to Venrick Mark. A very good return, man. He's got a punt return for a touchdown this year. This is a great kick. Mark backs up, fields it at his 25. Able to make the first guy miss, though. Mark past the 40. Mark with a kicker to beat. Mark inside the 30. State in bounds. Touchdown, Northwestern. A 75-yard touchdown on a punt return for Venrick Mark. And now the Wildcats take a 10-point lead late in the third. The best punt returner in the Big Ten and maybe the country is Venrick Mark. Great punt by Penn State, but sometimes when you outkick your coverage, a 54-yard punt, a 75 yard return as a result. Got an 82 yarder earlier in the season. A 75 yarder here. Bud Zine's extra point gives Northwestern a 11 point lead. With a great athlete at punt returner, you just need a couple of blocks. They get a block on hole, and then a, one guy out of position, and there's no way the punter is going to be able to keep up with one of the fastest guys on the field. Special teams a problem this year for Penn State with the field goal kicking. We've seen muff punts that have led to touchdowns, and now they give up a punt return for a score. Still a lot of time left, and Penn State's got a pretty good offense. Alex Kenny doesn't even make it to the 20. A lot of run plays in this third quarter, and they'll run it here. So we act off left tackle. And he didn't get much, maybe a yard. Again, Northwestern's done a pretty good job for the most part today against the run. Chance, Chance Carter with the stop. Northwestern, third time in the last five years. They've started 5-0. and oh. They have not been able to get that sixth win, but plays like this can get you there. 75-yard punt return for a touchdown as Pat Fitzgerald and company look to go to 6-0 and for the first time since 1962. Northwestern ranked for the first time in four seasons. They have not been 6-0 since 1962. But this is a very good road team. They've won nine of their last 14 Big Ten road games. And we're here off play action. McGloin dumps it off. Zwinak out across the 35. Wrapped up at the 38. That's a six-yard pickup. Proby, who was shaken up earlier, is back out there and makes the play. Good decision there by, by Matt McGloin. They had a, a, a play to go down the field, but just dropped the ball off to your back on the check down, and 
make sure you get positive yards. Play action again, and there's the tight end, Lehman, with a first down catch at the 43-yard line. Lehman came in with nine catches and a couple of touchdowns. So first down for Penn State as they continue with the up-tempo. Ball at the Nindy line, 44. Swinak running left and gets maybe three. Quentin Williams there for Northwestern. See a lot of runs on first down and passes on second down from Bill O'Brien in this in this no huddle system. I wonder if at some point they'll start to incorporate play action on first down. Well, you get the tight end flexed out to the bottom of the screen. Kyle Carter, McGloin throwing the other way. And the pass was a little off the mark. Robinson went to the ground to make the catch in Northwestern territory, a four yard gain. It brings up another third down and short. And right now it's all about speed and distribution. Speed with which they snap the football. They're trying to distribute the, the ball to as many of their playmakers as they can. They don't need to take a shot downfield. Northwestern was out of position on the snap. There's a man wide open. Lehman is standing wide open. Instead, the pass underneath. It's caught by Robinson at the 40 for a first down. But Lehman was down the seam and was wide open. But boy, Lehman was free. Northwestern wasn't set up in the secondary. Defense, number 31. The penalties declined. Result of the play is a first down. So it's a first down, but it could have been more, Brian. Yeah, they ran a four vertical. Here's Lehman. He's going to come up the field, and the defender's just going to fall down. And Matt McGloin, unfortunately for Penn State, was working the other side of the field and never saw him. It's hard sometimes. That's just a clear route. You're not looking that way. Swin at. On a dive for a yard, is grabbed at the ankles, so he gets positive yardage. Proby in there from his middle linebacker spot. Penn State continues for the up tempo. They got both Lehman and Carter, the two tight ends on the left side of the formation. Play action. McGloin waits and dumps it off. Zwinak inside the 20. And Zwinak finally. Brought down out of bounds inside the 15-yard line by Proby and Swinak shaken up on the play. Great read again by McGloin. They wanted to take a shot down the field. It's not there. Give it to your back. Stay on schedule. Convert first downs. Been impressed with the lack of chaos and panic from this offense in this drive. Here's Zordich in for Swinak. And he gets popped in the backfield for a loss. Wabusi in there. A setback of two. So second down and 12 from the 14 yard line. Loss of a yard. Second down and 11. the 13 yard line. 16th play of the drive. 78th play for Penn State on offense. Zordich underneath. Gets to about the six yard line. It'll bring up third down and around four. Proby and Eric Guzzo team up on the tackle. Remember, it's a two possession game, yeah. but you got issues with the field goal kicker. Well, but you, you need to be smart with the football here. Obviously, if you don't get a first down, you attempt a field goal because you need that anyway. But what you can't have is a turnover in this situation or a sack for that matter. So Matt McGloin has got to be efficient with the ball. Play 17, third down and four. McGloin with time, lobs for Lehman, tipped and almost intercepted. Nice play by Ibrahim Campbell, who was defending the tight end. All right, it's fourth down. Do you go for it or do you trust Ficken here with a short field goal? Just trying to get that ball up to his big tight end and a great play by Campbell. Unfortunately, that was dangerous. They're, they're gonna go here, Brian. How about this decision? Fourth and four, it's a 30-yard field goal. You know, Ficken has struggled, but he made one earlier. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I would kick the ball. You got you need 11 points. You got to you got to kick the field goal. Yeah, he just doesn't trust him. He didn't trust him. I, you can't blame him for not trusting him. They can still get a first down without the touchdown. McGloin stepping up, waiting, throwing. Robinson diving, touchdown, Penn State. 
All right, forget the field goal. <laughs> protection in the pocket he has all day to throw this football perfectly thrown out in front and Robinson who's been their playmaker on offense all year comes up with a big play now it looks like Penn State not only going to go for on fourth down but it's yep. going to go for two yep try to make it a three-point game yep seven touchdown catch for Robinson to lead the Big Ten 12 touchdown pass for McGloin let's see if they go shotgun and spread it out again here and they will. Penn State going for two, and they're going to run it. Zordich, he's in. How about that call? It's a three-point game. When the game's on the line and you need two yards, I love putting the ball in Mike Zornich's hands. He's been the heart and soul of this defense or this offense along with Mike Monty. And if anybody's going to try to tackle him one on one, I put my money on Mike Zornich. It's an 18 play drive, Brian. On fourth down, McGloin finds Robinson and they run it. Zornich gets the two point conversion to pull the Nittany Lions within three. Penn State pulls within three of Northwestern. As true sophomore Allen Robinson has become one of the better receivers in the Big Ten. He's got seven touchdown catches to lead the conference. And then the two point conversion, the run by Zordich. Let's see how Northwestern responds. Brian, they're an up tempo team. Do you continue to go up tempo here if you're the Wildcats? You try to slow it down a little bit. Absolutely. No, you, you, you are who you are. And when you, you, you go fast, as Pat Fitzgerald said, they play their best football. And I don't think that they feel that 28 points is going to be enough to win this game. There's Mark. Last time he touched it, he took it to the house on a punt return. He'll try to do it here on a kick return, but he won't even get to the 25. In fact, he's pushed back at the 18. The student section here at State College has come alive after a two-point conversion and the big special teams hit. The pressure's on Northwestern now, even though the Wildcats have a three-point lead. The young team on the road trying to get a huge win to get him to 6 and 0 for the first time in a half century. And they'll run the football on first down. Trumpy stood up. Minimal gain of the play. Marty is there for the Nittany Lions. Mike Hall as well. They'll give him two yards to the 20 on that carry. Marty, Hodges, Hill, Daquan Jones, all those guys in the front seven for Penn State in that timeout. They're trying to get this crowd into it. The way they can do that best is to continue to make plays like that one. Coulter's in at quarterback now. And he'll give to Trumpy off the left side. A nice play by Marty. Brought down after another two-yard game. So third and six coming up. And I get a sitting in there to throw the ball, right, for this play, third yes. and six? Yes. Well, Keith Coulter in the game at wide receiver, but it'll be Simeon getting the snap. But again, Penn State will keep their three linebackers in the game, Hodges, Monty, and, and the home. Looks like they're going to play a little man-to-man -man coverage for the first time today. Simeon going deep. Has a man, but it's overthrown. Incomplete. Three and out. It was intended for Lawrence. And overthrown by Simeon. I think Ted Roof sensed the emotion of this stadium. Decides to dial up the blitz and make Simeon make a throw. Good coverage on the back end and a huge stop for Penn State on defense. So Brandon Williams will punt from inside his 10. Della Valley and Lewis are deep. Remember, there was a muff punt in the first half by Penn State. They should get good field position. Kicking into a little bit of a wind. And Lewis going to let this one go, and this works out very well for Northwestern. Wow. 
Penn State was thinking they'd have the ball around the 40. Instead, after a 63-yard punt, they will start from inside the 15-yard line. Maudie, the emotional leader on that Penn State defense, gives the ball back to his offense. Penn State starting on its 15-yard line in this drive. And here's Winnack. And a nice hole off the right side of the 21. Proby made the tackle, but it's a six-yard game. We mentioned they had a 92-yard drive, so they're trying to put together a long drive here, maybe in the game. But you got to start wondering how much gas the Northwestern defensive front still has. They were on the field, as you said, for most of that fourth quarter already. And can they put a seven-minute drive together? They also have problems with a field goal kicker. Mosby Felder with a catch forward. Progress will be close to the first down. Campbell made the tackle. They'll spot him just short. It'll be third and one. And that time Mike Hankwitz decides to come with some pressure. We haven't seen a lot of blitz from Northwestern in this game, but I think he senses that his group is getting tired as well. And the quarterback sneak. Yeah, it looks like... He had enough, and certainly in the second effort he did, first down. How about this? As McLaurin's <laughs> fired up. It's the 83rd play run by Penn State to 52 for Northwestern. McLaurin, senior. Better, man, look at him. Former walk-on. One of the more vocal guys in the offseason about staying together. And he's become a leader on this team. Didn't really play under the previous staff until the end of last year. McLaurin. Robinson comes free in the middle of the field. All the way to the 44 yard line before he dragged down by Nick Van Hoos. 18 yards. Allen Robinson's the best wide receiver on this Penn State team and hasn't really gotten out in this game. That time wide open over the middle of the field. Wrong play on first downs winning. All the way to the 28. 15 yard run. They are on Northwestern right now, running on first down, throwing on second and third down. Northwestern's trying to get a new set of defensive linemen in. Mike Hankwitz, defensive coordinator, is concerned about his front. They are getting pushed around here late in the fourth. During five minutes to go, ball at the 27, play action. McGloin looking deep, firing end zone. Robinson, jump ball, can't come down with it. Defended by Nick Van Hoos. This is the third time they've run this play downfield, and this time Robinson had a chance. But credit Van Hoos. Great job getting his hand on the football. Just a red shirt freshman learning how to play the position, going up against one of the best in the Big Ten and holding his own. Second and ten at the 27. Empty set. Short throw, McGloin caught at the 22-yard line by Lehman. All right, Brian, do you handle third down like it's second down? Because for, it'd be about a 40-yard field goal, but obviously the, the kicker, Ficken, at three for nine on the year is unreliable. No, this is a different situation. Five minutes left in the game. You're down three. You've got to get the first. Quarterback sneak there, and he almost got it. It's kind of an interesting call, wasn't it there? Quarterback sneak, third down and five. He's short, fourth and two. Do you run that because you're, you know you're going for it on fourth down? He ran that because he saw something on the defensive side that, that they wanted to take advantage of. But they're going to go for it. I think that was their mindset. It would be about a 37-yard field goal, but no. They go on fourth and two at the 19. And McGloin will throw. Has time. Flushed out. Looking. Throws complete. Mosby Felder inside the 10. It's first and goal at the 6. McGloin waited and waited, and finally a man came open. That was great patience by him extending the play and forcing the defense to come to him and then dropping it off for the first down. Very composed play from the quarterback. First and goal at the 6. Here's Winnett. Dives to the 4. Clock will take us inside four minutes. 
Okay, now you're inside the 10. If you're Bill O'Brien, are you calling plays with field goal possibly in mind or no chance? I think he wants to go and score a touchdown here and win this ball game. What's, what's really impressive, Dave, is for college kids in this kind of environment with the game on the line to operate this quickly. There's a lot of decisions that are being made on the fly. That third down play, fourth down play, we're not going to discuss it all. Just get up there and run it. Really impressive. They huddle there to take time off the clock. Three and a half to go in the game. Down three. McGloin to pass. McGloin hit. And McGloin down, lost the ball. Looks like Penn State recovered it, though, at the six-yard line. It was chopped free by Tyler Scott. Wow. And McGloin appeared to get it back. It's Penn State ball, so third down and goal from just outside the five. There's Sam Fick and their kicker. Yeah. We'll see, again, what the call is here on third down. Yeah, this situation, Bill O'Brien loves to call two plays in the huddle and let his quarterback read the defense and get to the right play. That's how they scored early in their game to Robinson. I fully expect them to do the same thing here. Watch for McGloin to check this potential at the line of scrimmage. Alex Kenny, a receiver in motion. McGloin flushed out, rolling right, might run. He will. He is in. Touchdown. Penn State retakes the lead. That's the fifth rushing touchdown for Matt McGloin. Now, big extra point here for Ficken. Trying to make it a four-point game for Northwestern to score a touchdown. Normally, you wouldn't think a big deal, but Ficken has struggled mightily on short kicks, on all kicks. He nails this one. <laughs> We're not overstating that. That's a big play there, and obviously his teammates recognize it. Give credit to Matt McGloin. This play breaks down from the start. They get pressure up the middle. Now he's just trying to extend the play, and all, at the 10-yard line, he realizes, oh, my goodness, there's a great lane to the pylon. They've run 95 plays. They've had a 12-play touchdown drive, an 18-play touchdown drive. That was a 15-play, 85-yard touchdown drive. Northwestern can score quickly, though, and they got 237 to work with, and a dangerous return man. Will they kick it to Benrick Mark? They will. Mark has a punt return for a touchdown, and wow, they tell him to take a knee. Wow. They got to go 75 yards. Simeon is the quarterback. Throws. Oh! Tipped. Incomplete. It should have been picked off by Morris, and then on the redirection, it was almost caught. She was trying to fit it on the sideline, and that's a forced throw. Three guys back there. And if you're Trevor Simeon now, take note of the situation. Two and a half minutes, you got all three timeouts. You don't need to force anything, but as a young player, sometimes that's hard. Look what Marty did. You got a piece of it, and they may have distracted Morris. So it couldn't get the interception. Over the middle, that was with the official right there, and was thrown behind the intended receiver, Tony Jones. It's third down and 10. All right, if you don't get it, you get three timeouts, 228. Can you still punt here? Yeah, you can still punt, but I mean, you want to get a first down here. This is your opportunity. And Pat Fitzgerald feels confident in Trevor Simeon. Remember, let's go back to the first game of the year against Syracuse. He was 7 of 8 on the final drive to score the winning touchdown. So he's been in this situation before. Empty set, third and 10. Simeon with time that everybody covered. He'll run, and he's short. He only got about three. Let's see what Northwestern does on fourth down and seven. Looks like they're going to go for it here. You may not, never get the ball back if you, you might, put it. You, so. you might not, but then again, you might not make fourth and seven. So uh, the, the timeout situation, I'll put it this way, is on your side. You could get the ball back. Even if you don't get it, you still can stop Penn State. They're not going to want to try a field goal. That's true. Fourth and seven. Simeon. Over the middle. Incomplete. Penn State takes over on downs. Deflected by Mike Hall. What a comeback by the Nittany Lions. 
After what appeared to be maybe a dagger, a punt return for a touchdown. You're down 11. In the fourth quarter, Penn State comes storming back and leads by four with a chance to put it away. Again, Northwestern still with three timeouts left. You imagine Penn State isn't going to try a field goal. Boy, this crowd has not had a whole lot to cheer about this year. Some wins at home, but they are into this game now. Here's Sordich. And he doesn't get anything here, so Northwestern to use a timeout. It'll be second and ten. What a job by, by Bill O'Brien, given all that he's had to deal with. The distractions, loss of players from transferring. Second and ten. Here's Zornich. First down and more. Zornich dives. And out of bounds. But it's a first and goal. Stepped out there at the three. But it's first and goal at the three. A minute 36 left. I can't help but think about this this offseason and the two guys that walked out of that last building were Mike Zordich and Mike Marty. And now those two guys making big plays on both sides of the football late in the fourth quarter. Nick Justice is due. Here's Zordich again, gets away from a defender, dies for the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Penn State. Let's look here to see if he was down before the ball crossed the plane. The elbow down. Hard to tell if the ball yeah. crosses the plane there because of the way the ball set up. And you got to give so much of the credit. Yes, Bill O'Brien has steward has stewarded this ship in a way that's been really unbelievable. But credit those seniors, those guys that came out and, and said, "I'm going to stay." And these fans that said, we're going to stand behind you, I think that plays a lot into the success that they've had this year. You lose your leading rusher as the extra point is good. You lose your top seven receivers. You lose your kicker. You lose your head coach. You've got a first-time head coach. And you're going to be 4-2, and 2-0 two, two and with the Big Ten, going into a bye week. you still got to go to Iowa. still got Ohio State on the schedule, but you got Indiana here. A Purdue a team that any think is on the rise. They've got Michigan later today. Now both of these teams, I think, are at the upper echelon of the Big Ten this year. Well, Nebraska may have something to say about this, but it looks like right now the, the two best teams in the Big Ten are ineligible for the Big Ten championship, Ohio State and Penn State. Squid kick. And Hanrahan picks it up and then just dives on it at the 24-yard line with a minute 27 to go. Northwestern will play at Minnesota next week, then back-to-back -back home games against Nebraska and Iowa. Prater made the catch, but uh, not much. Stayed in bounds, and the clock continues to run. Simeon. Underneath Jones trying to get out of bounds can't lost the ball and it's picked up by Penn State Daquan Davis recovers the fumble This one's over Western will fall from the ranks of the unbeaten. Again, they fail to get to 6-0. Third time in the last five years, they started 5-0. But today, the story is Penn State. Bill O'Brien's team has won four in a row. They are 2-0 in the Big Ten. 
and they come from 11 down after that punt return for a touchdown. They storm back to win it, and Bill O'Brien is with Jen Bryant. Bear, Thanks, Dave. Coach? <laughs> Get to the bear. Congratulations, Coach Zordix, Winnack. What do you think about their ability to run the ball today? I just think, uh, you know, we got a special group of kids, but tough kids. Talking about how tough they are, you guys started with dropping your first two. You've answered back, winning your last four. What does that say about this team, given all that you guys have been through? Just a resilient bunch of guys, you know, and uh, we got a great senior class. We've got a great coaching staff. It's a fun place to play football and go to school. Thanks so much, Coach. Congrats on the win. Thanks, Jen. Dave? All right, Jen. Four straight wins for Penn State. As seniors fired up after 39. 28 win here in their Big Ten home opener.